All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Whiny Women's Wine Hangout. Uh, today, in celebration of Black History Month, we are talking African American wines and blacks in the wine industry. And it's just two of us today. That's all right, because we're going to make it work. Glennis, you want to introduce yourself exactly. in your blog? Yes, hey everyone, and hopefully you're not as snowed in as the rest of us are on the <laughs> East Coast. Um, my name is Glennis Hill, and uh, I blog at Vino, Vino Noir, and I'm very excited about um, Black History Wines because I have an exciting and innovative and delicious wine and wine family and history about this family to talk about this evening. Um, if you're ever in the DC, Mar D I say DMV, District, Maryland, Virginia area, you look us up and um, let's wine a little bit together. Yay, talk to you about my wine. <laughs> my exempt minute. All right. Well, Glennis, you can actually go first because I'm going to explain my little situation about my wine. It's going to be a little lengthy. So, Great. But, um, so you go first. Excellent. So everyone, um, hopefully you can see that label right there. I figured yeah, I like the way you have that there. You need to do that from now on. I like that. I know. <laughs> see, my, my <laughs> other wine sisters talk about my technology skills, so um, everybody can see that. This delicious, delicious Red Zen is from the Brown family. The Brown family started as actually they're farmers at heart. The mother and father of um, this family bought some land in the um, Rutherford area of Napa back in, I don't want to screw up the dates, I do have that written down here <laughs> to be exact. They acquired land in 1980. Um, the grandmother was and still it was, I guess, at this point, because I think she's deceased, um, was a horticulturist. So farming was their passion. They started out sourcing their red Zen grapes. A lot of the other wineries in the Napa area use their Zen grapes, Zinfandel grapes, to mm. make their red Zins. Okay. When the children of the parents who bought moved in from the Southern Cal area up to the Napa region, grew up, went to college and things like that, they decided to start bottling under their own label. Mm. So okay. Hint was born Brown Estates. Okay. And around, I want to make sure I get the right date, in 1995. Okay. 1995. Um, if you ever get a chance, their tastings are by um, appointment only. Mm -hmm. The land, and I, I don't want to misquote anything, so I'm not going to try to act, because I've been drinking this wine. <laughs> this. 14.9% alcohol mm -hmm. in this red zen. Mm -hmm. Now, I know some of you are saying, oh my gosh, that's a lot of alcohol in a wine and maybe it's overpowering. Not this, not this zen. This family have, has perfected winemaking. Um, this mouthfeel on this is silk. Mm. You don't you don't feel the tannins, you don't feel the alcohol level. All you feel on your on the palate is silk going that down with a very very long finish of black plum, dark mm. cherry, um, new leather. Mm. Okay, there's my phone. I apologize. <laughs> uh -huh. Doesn't fail. Um, on the nose. You have some anise. You have spice. I get so excited when I drink this Zen because this would be my go-to Zen when I would, would be introducing friends, family, new colleagues, mm -hmm. new clients to red wine who mm -hmm. are not used to drinking wines. It's, yeah. The tannins are there. However, it's not that very drying sensation. Mm-hmm. 
it's um it's a I just woo, woo it makes me excited. <laughs> Think about introducing new red wine drinkers to this. The price point on this particular bottle uh -huh. is forty five dollars. Okay. Okay. It's, it's worth okay. Five dollars. So, so <clears throat> um, do do they make other wines, or do they yes. specifically yes, make they Zins? Do. Okay. This the Zin is their um, hallmark. This is where they started, mm -hmm. but they do. Oh, the Kathleen, Hi. Hey, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh my God, I was trying to get it together. That's all right, girl. I'm glad you're here. So they do um a lot. They do a late harvest in as well. Really? This, oh yeah. I mean, these folks. Okay, so here are the children. I don't. I want to make sure y'all can see. These are the brown children. Okay. Um, literally, ha ha, they're brown and they're <laughs> <You know what? laughs> Yes, uh, let's make sure I get their names right. We have <clears throat> Deneen, Coral, and David. Okay. They you got the a, photograph, you came with I it. I know, okay. right? They do a newsletter, and I love this. Is this gorgeous? This is what they oh, do. Oh, I love front. it. That's so oh, nice. That's nice. Is that not phenomenal? First class, the father was the one who, when I went back in 2009 and something like that to this estate, the fa the children weren't there and the father said, oh, we didn't have you down, but I'll take you through. He did the an outstanding wine tasting and walkthrough of the vineyard. Mm -hmm. They actually augured through a, mount, a mountain. So their cellar is the, the mountain. Wow. That's a part of their estate, and they have over. Let me make. Let me make sure I'm not lying. I want to make up uh, 450 acres of roughneck wilderness. Um, roughneck wilderness. That's a thing. <laughs> acres planted amidst of the 450 of vines. So, Brown Estate. It. I salute them for Black history in winemaking. And happy Black History Month. Go out if you feel like splurging. This is the one. This is the bottle. All right. Yes. All right. Oh, man. Tanisha, are you ready or do you need a minute? Okay, like, what? how are we doing it? What, what's well, we are, we're all talking about what we're drinking or what we had in mind or, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're not drinking anything. If, if you, and I mean nothing am I drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you want to talk about your blacks in Paris or whatever you want to do. Talk about, Tanisha, talk about yourself being a black female Doing sure. a wine walking tour because mm -hmm. I've been talking about you to people who are about to come you. to Paris. Mm -hmm. So okay. let's give some information about you. Hi, I'm Tanisha. Um, and uh, yeah, so I live in Paris. I um, moved here for the first time last year in January, and I came here to teach wine and spirits at a business school. So I teach a luxury wine and spirits course, and then um, a, year, a wine science and European wines course. And um, I got the idea while I was here teaching, I got several ideas, but one of the main ideas I had was uh, a wine walking tour. So many people were asking questions. Once they found out what I did, they were like, okay, so like, what wine should I get at the store? Like, When I go into my wine shop, I never know what to buy or I never know what to say. What's funny is we look at the French so much for their wine mm -hmm. and you know, everybody thinks like, oh, I'm in France, I should drink wine, I should do this. But when it comes to them actually talking about wine or really knowing about wine as a whole, I can't say that a lot of them do. Mm -hmm. So people just know like it's France, I should drink wine, but they have no idea what to get. I mean, and even people in the States when it comes to French wine, that's one of the um, hardest things to kind of figure out, French and Italian wines, because the grapes aren't always on the label. So I came up with the idea of the wine walking tour where I go to um, I take people to a wine shop, like a local little um, wine shop, 
I take them to a grocery store in a neighborhood. And we look at the wine section at the grocery store because, of course, the wine section and grocery stores here are, like, amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you I'm get sure. everything you need from all the French regions there at super affordable prices. Like I've told you before, if a wine is more than like eight euro, I'm like, wait, what? Why? Why is it this much? Why am I buying? Wow. Like, wait, what? I mean, I pay more than that. Like, I'm just joking now because I've gotten some really amazing wines from Bordeaux and Burgundy for like twenty five, which is still like ridiculously cheap. It'll never happen in the states again. So when I move back, I probably won't drink French wine anymore. <laughs> <laughs> But we go to a wine shop, the grocery store, and then we go to a wine bar. And mm -hmm. I talk through, you know, the different kinds of things that you see, what the different regions are, um, what like, what are some of the things you see on the labels. Some people pick by, um, you know how you see wines have these different awards on them and they'll have like the little stickers that say they mm -hmm. won this or mm -hmm. award winning, blah, blah, blah. Some people pick by that. Um, it's hard to pick by label in France because a lot of the labels look the same. They don't do the same kind of, you don't see the label decorations and the, mm. the different things on the label that you do um, in the States. You also right. don't see, depending on what shop you go in, um, you don't see a lot of wines from other places. Like, you know, when we were doing the hangouts before and I needed to find something from, I think, New Zealand and then from mm -hmm. South Africa, like, mm -hmm. I struggled. I was like, um, I want to get a Savion Blanc from New Zealand. They were like, why? Because <laughs> I want to drink it. They were like, why? Because like, I need something from New Zealand. They were like, well, we have Sancerre. We have Terrain. I was like, but but I need New Zealand. So, But anyway, so um, we end the tour at a wine bar where we just taste a couple of glasses, um, get some snacks, and kind of just chat with each other, talk about what we learned, if they have any questions or anything like that. You know, they can let me know. I posted my first tour on Viable.com, mm -hmm. V-A-Y-A-B-L-E. Mm -hmm. um, can you spell that one me. more time? I'm sorry. V-A-Y-A-B-L-E dot yeah. com. So I posted one on there. I'm going to be doing a couple more because I want to add cocktail tours to the mix too because oh, Paris nice. has really jumped in on the cocktail craft cocktail scene. Mm -hmm. um, I know when I've been here on previous visits, the only cocktails you were getting was like that super sweet, um, full of sugar, Caprinia, or mm -hmm. um, like a Cosmo. But now they're experimenting with the ice. They're doing all kind of you know, fresh fruit and fresh juices, and they're using um, a lot of French spirits, too, as, like, the base of drinks, because we oh, wow. use a lot of French spirits in the States, um, <clears throat> but those are things that they had kind of stayed away from and weren't using, and since they don't use all that flavored vodka, they actually really don't use vodka in too many drinks here. It's, what? um, what? So, oh, and okay. So, okay. So, what do they, whiskey? Okay. Yeah, gin, whiskey, um, yeah. I mean, what, rum. It's one place that's actually um, known for their rum collection, Maria Loca, and then you have um, other places. Uh, one place, Lulu White, that I went to recently, that all their drinks have absinthe in them. Oh, wow. So they're like an absinthe bar, and so everything has absinthe. But yeah, do the wine walking tours. Um, also do private wine tours. Um, so if anybody wants to just set up with me a time and then we go out and we do a private tour of their neighborhood place so they can, you know, walk through the things in their neighborhood. Also do in-home. People come in if they want to do like a wine tasting in their apartment or in their hotel room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I'm setting all of that up now. Because okay. tourist season, tourist season so starts how about April. So someone get in touch with you? They can email me, Tanisha, at girlmeetsglass.com, and I'm hoping to have everything up and running and have my site together, cross my fingers, um, beginning of March. So I'm working and on that now. they can find you on Facebook and Twitter and yeah, all that. Yeah, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, because I'm constantly posting um, okay. my blog. I did a post on, um, I went to the grocery store the other day and just picked up the cheapest wine I could find in the store. Mm -hmm. And so I did a little review on that. Mm. So that could have gone a couple of different ways. So what's viable for folks who don't know? Like, 
<laughs> so for people who don't know, <laughs> I'm going to say whatever. But no, I didn't know about what it was either. Somebody else told me. It's just a site that you can um go to and book tours for. Okay. Um, a it's myriad specifically of tours, or is it like um event? Specifically, right? um, no, it's tours. Um, oh, okay. Of different places, different, and I'm saying different places within different countries and um, oh, okay. things like that. So if you Very go to a nice. country, you want to do it. So something like, I don't know if you've heard of Viator or um, uh, Tours by Locals, like sites like that. So oh, okay. Those, but it's something like that that you can just go to and, you know, book something that's a little different than your normal, just, okay, hop on, hop off bus or just ride around Paris kind of thing. Very nice. Yeah, trying to Very bring nice. um, my whole goal in wine and the wine industry in general is to make it more interesting, make it more accessible, and just to give people more information. Mm -hmm. I feel like we just don't have enough information about it. We don't know, and we don't want to ask. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. So I want to make people feel comfortable asking me all the questions they have, and I want to arm them with all the information necessary so that they can make more informed decisions when they go to restaurants, when they go to wine bars, when they go to wine shops, when they're in the grocery store. There is so much wine out there, so many grapes, so many regions, and most people only drink from maybe two or three. Exactly. I agree. And people are like, oh, well, I don't like you know, Chardonnay. Okay, well, you couldn't have tasted all the Chardonnay from all the different regions. Right. You might just not like California Chardonnay, but you love Chablis. I agree. You might I not agree. like Chablis, you might yeah, like Australian yeah. Chardonnay. So I agree. You gotta... I agree. Because that was, that's me. I do not like, I, I, I prefer French Chablis instead of California Chard. Yeah. Um, Unless they are still fermented, right, with very little oak mm -hmm. um, and malolactic fermentation, I just mm -hmm. it's just too much in one glass for me. It tastes like a box of popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> and what's funny is when I first started drinking real wine, I was drinking California Chardonnay, and I wanted mm -hmm. it to be like buttery, popcorny, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. while I like oak in my wine, I don't necessarily like my whites oaked as much. Maybe mm -hmm. like a little bit of oak on the I vignette. Agree. Yeah. But I, now my reds, I want them to be like oak. I'm licking the tree. Like I want yeah. it to be oak. <laughs> exactly. I, I want agree. it to be the inside of a cigar box. Like that's how mm -hmm. I want my reds. Yeah. But when it comes to my whites, um, sometimes I do want them full body, but I still, you know, I want them lighter. I want them full body. When I want a full body, but I don't yeah. want it to be full body based on oak. Because a lot of times I feel when it comes to white wines, oak is covering up sketchy or exactly. not right grapes. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly. taken away from the flavor. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm sorry, I got a little off topic. So that okay. is me <laughs> in a nutshell. Gotcha. <laughs> and, um, I guess I'm the black person in wine. But I do All want right. to talk about one other person because mm -hmm. I always have to shout out hometown and when mm -hmm. people in Chicago are doing big things. There's one person, um, she actually had uh, a club in, well, a lounge bar in Chicago. But um, unfortunately there was some damage to it. Um, I think it flooded and she like lost everything. Oh, so wow. she came out with, right, so you would think like, wait, down and out, you know what, let me just go on back uh, mm -hmm. and get a 9 to 5. Yeah. Let me just go on here and work this little 9 to 5 and that be that. But she was like, no, nope, that's not the life for me. <clears throat> she came out with a line of wines called Love Corkscrew. That's my sorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so... I want to give a, a shout out to Krishan Lampley, who um, is in Chicago, and she has a line of wines, Love Corkscrew, with, you know, funky names, and um, yes. it ranges in flavor. She has a sweet wine um, made from Concord grapes. She has a Riesling. There's a sparkling in there. Um, I think it's called Brusecco, and then down to uh, a Cabernet Sauvignon. So yep. she has some amazing wines. And she also does, um, she has a podcast called Love Corkscrew. 
And she does um, a live um, show where she's at certain restaurants around Chicago. She gets people to come out and it's called the Tequila Tales where they have a topic that they talk about. I've gone to that a few times. They have a topic that they talk about. And, um, you know, it's her and her co-host. And they just bring the topic up and then people just jump right in. I mean, the conversation has no problem getting started. There's also wine involved, so I know that helps with the conversation. But, <laughs> yeah. I was oh, trying one, to get her wine for out. this, but I just couldn't get it um, quick enough because this, you know, when we decided yeah. to do this, I was like, ah, where can I order and get, and who can I deal with? So, yeah, but I tried to do her this. Yeah. Okay, sorry I didn't mean to your thunder, but you know I got to oh. shout out uh, Chicago, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> It's I mean, I have a full list of people, but, you know, we we only have so much time. Gotcha. So, yeah. There you go. So I guess I'm going last. So let me tell you what happened. So, <laughs> you, know, you know, black people always got an excuse or something. So I don't have my wine here. Okay. So, so, okay, so my plan was. the post was, office? <laughs> well, listen. So listen, my plan was to go to what the only black wine store in DC to get a black wine because they have a selection and of course <laughs> they're closed unexpectedly yesterday so oh, today I couldn't get out with, huh? oh, huh? I, I, I ain't gonna name them names I ain't gonna name them names but they know who they are um but um so yeah uh, of course the snow you know today so <laughs> I couldn't get out today because we're snowed in but my wine my wine was, um, knock on wood, I'm going to hold up my phone. This is real ghetto this time, but it's okay. It's okay. Girl, that's all right. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Okay. 100% Chard uh, Chardonnay from Mouton Noir. Um, mm -hmm. Andre Mack. Black Somalier from New York. I don't know if he's from New York or if he worked in New York. He worked in California. Anyways, he's a black Somalier. Yeah, I think all and of he those. Makes, makes wine from Oregon grapes. Mm -hmm. So, and he's also like some sort of artist, so he makes t-shirts and coloring books and stickers. You can find him on Twitter, Mouton Noir, uh, Andre Mack, one of the two. But um, they have in the store, they also have Knock on Wood, which is 100% Chardonnay, stainless steel, beautiful wine. Beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. wine. I had it last week. Um, right now they have Love Drunk, and that's the Rosé. Can you see rose. that? The Rosé, yeah, yeah, that was nice. Yeah. So I haven't had that one, but of course the store that I was going to go to had Love Drunk in the window, like they had bottles and bottles of it, and I couldn't get it. And yeah. you were just looking in the window. Like. And I was just looking. And I, <laughs> listen, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I hung around. I hung around for two hours waiting for that store open. Oh. You talking about something heated? I was heated. Anyway, so, so yeah. Um. Um, he makes um, he makes other wines called OPP. Let's see OPP? other people's yeah Pino. other people's <laughs> other people's Pinot Gris, and then he makes um, other people's Pinot Noir. So he makes really good wines, um, and he's kind of like this nerdy kind of punk rock kind of black guy, but he's really mm -hmm. interesting. Um, so check him out, check out his wines. When I find out exactly where you can find his wines other than this wine store that was, you know, unexpectedly closed yesterday, then I will tweet it out on where you can find his wines. So, um, but in making up for that, I have a list of black owned wine businesses in the DC area that you guys can go to. Hold on. Oh, excellent. Wait. All right. Hold on. You guys probably already know these already. Okay. So, I have one wine club, and that's Vino Lovers. So, Vino Lovers is a wine-based wine club founded in 2006 by Justin Harrison and his mom. So, it's your quintessential wine club where you either pick the bottles or they pick the bottles for you. The prices range depending on whether you want wine once or twice a month and what you pick, that kind of thing. But it's a really cool wine club. And that is Vino Lovers. And you can find them on Twitter at Vino Lovers. And they have a website, um, VinoLovers.com. Okay, so my next one is Cork, D.C. Everybody's been to Cork. It's been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> Cork, um, well, it's on 14th Street, I believe. Is that right, y'all? 
Um, yeah. yep. So um, owners is Khalid Pips, and I think he's married, right? He's married to mm-hmm. the other co-owner, Diane mm-hmm. Gross. Okay, so Cork DC. So they have the wine bar slash restaurant, and then they have like a wine shop. So double duty. You can go in there and buy your wine. You can go in there and sit and eat. Um, it's a really cool establishment. All right, so next we're going to, okay, this is not here, but they're, they're in California. I had to mention her because we met her over the summer. So Zuri Wine. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Tawani oh, Price out of California. Um, she does wine tours and wines events in California. Um, Tanisha, I don't remember exactly what part of California she's in. She's in L.A. Okay. So, but um, what's exciting about her is she does wine tours for all the black wineries um, mm-hmm. in California. So she'll take you to all the black wineries in California, mm-hmm. and she's really knowledgeable. She knows everybody really well, and she does a great job. We were at the Wine Bloggers Conference, and we hung with her for a little bit, and she took us to, Tanisha, what's the name of it? I want to say it right. Rideau? Rideau. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we went to Rideau. <clears throat> a black woman owns that winery, and we tasted some really good wines there. And so she's been doing Zuri wine for. Yeah. Yep, yep. And my last one, I mean, you gotta respect the hustle on this one. Flow Wine, Marcus Johnson. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, seriously, yeah. really. Mm. Yeah, take a drink. Well, this dude is a jazz musician. Mm-hmm. And for love so- only. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't expect that. (laughs) Um, So he's a jazz musician who makes wines. So you might see him. I think he has, I forgot the name of his little nightclubs or his jazz clubs he has in PG County. But I think he has one or two. But anyway, he's a jazz musician. You can hire him to play at your event and he can bring his wine. I mean, Mm. it's like a twofer. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> How's that for your side hustle? Right. Right. <laughs> right. So you can find him at flowbrands.com. But mm-hmm. um so yeah. I thought I provided I've had, um he has a red, a white, a dry white, <laughs> and a sweet white. I guess he oh, figured okay. um, so many people yeah. were asking him because yeah. um, he didn't have a sweet white initially and I was like, Wow, he doesn't? Hmm, interesting. But then he came out with one. The red, I really, really enjoy the red. Mm. Um, it's a blend. I think the white might be single bridal, but I know for sure the red is a blend, and it's yeah. very nice. Yeah. Very wow. nice. Yeah. 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 So, Tanisha, yeah. if someone wanted to get in touch with you in France, do you have like a outside of your <coughs> email address a way that for folks to get in touch with you if they're there and say, "Oh, we have time in our schedule." Yeah, they can. Um, it, it's best to email me. I do have a phone, but um, I don't remember <laughs> my French phone number. Got you, got you. Like okay. I literally have it written down on my phone. <laughs> I can't remember. Wow. Email is the best. Okay. Which is in email the best. other room, so I don't want to take the headphones off, run, and then gotcha. come back. Because you know, yeah, that's a lot. But no, email me, tweet me. Um, leave a message on my Facebook page, whether it's um, yeah, leave a message on my girl meets glass, a message on my girl meets glass page, and they can um get in touch with me there. So let me ask a question. What since it is Black History Month, mm-hmm. um, and we are talking hopefully not only to people of color but to other folks, but more of more to people of color who are hesitant about traveling. And um, you actually decided to not only travel, mm. but to pick up shop and move. Right. Can you talk a little bit about that experience and <laughs> what you've been experiencing <laughs> and how that is? You know, because I know a lot of people who are just like, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, people tell me that all the time. They're like, I can't believe you did that. Like, wow, I, I wish I could do that. And right, it's funny because right. I never thought I never thought of it as a big deal. But then as I hear more people say it, I'm like, wow, the pressure's on. Like, I really got to make something of myself. Like, I got to do something and be somebody. Like, I can't just come back like, hey, y'all. Well, you know. <laughs> That's it. But, um, no. I think one of the biggest challenges for me is um, 
not speaking French. And that being, and I say that as a challenge because that has more to do with my confidence in talking to people or approaching people about certain things mm -hmm. and less to do with me actually being able to get things done because most people here speak English okay. and they will speak English to me. Oh, okay. But there's something to be said when you're not confident that people will understand. Like right. I know talking to you all, anything I say, my English is on point. So like I've been speaking English for all the years. So if I say something to you, I know you understand me. If you don't, it's something wrong with you because mm -hmm. I'm speaking proper English. Mm -hmm. Right. But if I say something to someone here, I don't know their level of English. I don't know what they think I said. I don't know what they understood. Right. So as soon as they say, huh, it could just be they didn't hear me, but I'm like, oh, wait, they didn't understand. Oh, let me try this again. So it's a level of confidence issue, and that's something that um, I'm working through now. Um, another thing is um, trying to pack to get here. Um, I can't... <laughs> Like we're talking, you are going to be living somewhere for several months. Right. Well, a year now. I'm here for a year, mm -hmm. and I came with two suitcases. Um, if anybody uh, knew what my closet looked like before, you know that two suitcases is maybe one eighth of my wardrobe. Um, <laughs> and I'm not saying this to brag, but I know for sure I have over a hundred pairs of shoes. I know that right. for sure. I am here with five. All right. Mm. And I'm saying that to say I have realized how much I really need and how much mm. is mm -hmm. excess or that I did, you know, mm -hmm. just because I could. Yeah. I'm perfectly fine with my five pairs of shoes. Yes, right. I see other shoes that I want. Um, but you know, I just look at them in the window, and I know what I'm here for. They we, they just wrapped up the winter sales here. Stuff is 60, you know, 50, 60, 70 percent off. I'm walking past our windows like, <sighs> just touching the window. <laughs> wow. You know, yeah. just, and just walking on by. Mm. Walk on by. Mm. But, yeah, mm. just, you know, that kind of thing. So just realizing what I really needed to live, what was important. Yeah. Um, also, I'm able to be more focused. Wow. Here, I don't have as many distractions. I mean, I do have the distraction that is the backdrop of Paris and yeah. just walking out and just everything that I see on a daily. I've gotten mm -hmm. over that a little bit now. One, because I've been here for a little while. Um, just to add up all my time, I've been here like seven months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little bit over. Like, it's not, it still has the same magic and stuff to me, but it's not. Like, I live here, so I don't feel that right. say, oh, my goodness, I have to do, right. I have to see every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what else? I have a question. Um, sure. I know working in wine here, being black or, I mean, shoot, being any type of minority here, I'm sure you <laughs> <Right>? get <laughs> underestimated, um, you know, people will walk, yeah. anyway, I'm not even going to get into stories, but right. you get underestimated. Girl. Do you get that there okay. in Paris? So here, it's weird because people want to know me and talk to me because I'm a black American. Okay. Like, I know you exactly. see my Blacks in Paris post, like, people here love black culture, and I okay. don't think that we understand, and by we, I mean black Americans, understand how much we influence the world. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The exactly. world. Yeah. I go in places and hear, you know, R&B, hip-hop. I'm in <laughs> Sephora. I'm in, you know, um, other little, you know, mom-and-pop type uh, retail stores and hear R&B music. Um, but people want to talk to me because I'm black American. Mm -hmm. As far as wine goes, um, French don't want to talk to anybody but French. So okay. Um, okay. that one thing. But there are so many Americans and English speakers that come to Paris because Paris is the most visited city on the planet. Mm -hmm. And so many people come here and they want wine and they want to know about wine. So mm -hmm. 
like the one thing that they they need people that speak English to do that. Sure. So I'm able to kind of move in that lane because I'm knowledgeable about wine. I'm knowledgeable mm -hmm. about French wine because I have it just so worked out that I have several French wine certifications. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm able to move in that space. And mm -hmm. instead right. of, you know, trying to, like while I do teach the French students about wine, I think that my goal <coughs> here is to educate more Americans or English speakers that come here, like tourists about wine, and then on my website just teaching people back in the States the wine outside of the states, the, mm -hmm. you know, the wine that I can get right. here. Because there's a lot of wines that mm -hmm. I've had, um, and now I'm starting to buy things at the wine shop that I know I can't get back in America. Okay. Like sure. when you think of um, terrain from the Loire Valley, and mm -hmm. I think this post probably goes up uh, tomorrow morning. Well, tomorrow morning for you all, later on today for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> when you think of terrain from the Loire, you think Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc, or maybe Chenin Blanc. I had them all back from terrain um, oh, wow. last week, so I posted about that. I had a red wine from the Jura, um, a Pinot Noir, when usually Jura is white wines. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm starting to ask, because now I'm getting my little, you know, my swagger with French, and can <laughs> ask in wine shops, you know, ask the person what kind of things you have that are different. I'm doing research on, okay. you know, what are up-and-coming regions in France. So, <coughs> I'm saying all that to say, because I kind of mm -hmm. got off topic, sorry. But it's not, I don't think... I don't have the same problem here that I have in the States as far as people mm -hmm. looking at me being black, <laughs> being female a certain way. I think there are a different set of problems or mm -hmm. another set of things that they look at. Mm -hmm. But um, being, once they hear me talk a little bit about wine and, you know, ask them certain mm -hmm. questions, they're like, okay, mm -hmm. she does know something. And so sure. I think they just respect knowledge. They don't look at me exactly. as... Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Like that. That's one thing about Paris, and then I realized since I've been here, and since I've been reading about the history of blacks in Paris, mm -hmm. Paris is more, they look more at the class of people, like okay. where do you live, mm -hmm. you look like you have money, do you actually okay. have money, like mm -hmm. they it's look close. at things like that, they don't look at you like, okay, what, Yeah. okay, brown girl, you clearly gotcha. don't know, no, you dismissed like no I don't I, I have don't a question so I have a question for both of you guys so <clears throat> someone asked me um, not too long ago do you need to have certain uh, certifications to be in wine so if <laughs> one of your peers who is black <laughs> said I want to get into wine what do I need to do how would you guide them both of you uh, answer this question <laughs> Uh, you don't, I, from what I have come to realize, there are a lot of people out here without any certifications mm -hmm. in one. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Now, I do believe you need to study. Yeah. Because if you want to be credible, <laughs> in what you're writing and what you're presenting and what you're talking about, you might want to know something because mm -hmm. somebody will figure it out who, when wine is their livelihood. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I say this because I was surprised because I, I thought Oh, you definitely need your certifications right. before you could start blogging, before you could start doing A, B, and right. C, and Y. That's but what I thought, too. I come to find out that's not the case, and I have found out that there are some folks who are making mad dollars mm -hmm. in this industry and don't have certification none. none. Yeah. And, again, it goes back to me being... to they're not necessarily a person of a brown hue. <laughs> I can't. We're talking about black history. Um, Thank you. I want to be the one to keep country, bringing it up. Ugh. In this country, if you of a brown hue, 
you need a, some type of credential, yeah. whatever that is. Yeah, it is. But yeah. in this country, there are credentials first, and then they get to know what because they see you. Oh, yeah. what credentials do you have? Then they talk. So yeah, um, I I won't say that it's needed, but mm -hmm. yeah, it helps you along depending on what you want to do. With yeah. It. So, okay. Yeah. That's my ten cents. All right, Tanisha. Yeah. So I'm gonna co-sign on everything. Um, <laughs> say it. Uh, because I feel like for us, even just to sit at the table, you mm -hmm. need all of that. So if somebody mm -hmm. was really asking me, did they need a certification to be in the wine industry? I would ask them first what they wanted to do. <clears throat> okay. Um, but even people who are, you know, maybe just um, being like a negociant for wine, like they get their grapes from somewhere else and then they just put their own label or put their mm -hmm. name behind it. They yeah. don't you know, necessarily have any wine knowledge or need to have any. All they need right. to have is like a good marketing team name for themselves and, yeah. um, you know, now maybe like a Twitter account or something and they'll be fine. <laughs> right. Maybe mm -hmm. like some basic wine knowledge, like they might want to do intermediate WSET or something like mm -hmm. that. I know for me and what I do, it's no way I can do what mm -hmm. I do. Like, you can't be out like, yeah, let me just go ahead and teach some other people right. um, at a collegiate level, but yet right. I don't have anything. Like, I couldn't be a college professor in anything else without mm -hmm. some kind of higher education. Oh, sure. Yeah, I have a right. master's right. degree that has nothing to do with wine, so they'd be like, wait, I don't really know what right. that master's has to do mm -hmm. with what you're doing now. Right. Right. But for me... Outside of even just um, teaching at that level, walking into a room and somebody seeing my name with the letters after it, um, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, wait, who is this? I've okay. had people say it by me, and you all have heard me tell these stories, you know, off camera when we out hanging out. You've heard me tell the stories about how people have played me sometimes or acted a certain way. Mm -hmm. But I have mm -hmm. also had people seek me out because mm -hmm. they're like, Oh wait. Right. One, her name's Tanisha, so clearly she's black. <laughs> and then we see all these letters like, oh, I want to know who she is. Yeah. So in some ways I also find that it's good that I have all mm -hmm. these certifications and that I'm the right. only black person. Right. right. Because right. people will remember, oh yeah, Tanisha, oh, the black girl. Yeah. Now exactly. you don't always want to be remembered as like, oh yeah, that was a black chick, right? Right. But right. Hey, whatever. You will remember the one out of the room of like 200. Like yeah. when I think of the European Wine Bloggers Conference, it was just me. I got to get to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, it was just me. Right. So when people met me, they, you know, you, you mm -hmm. will remember me, right. black girl. Right. Um, and you will see like, oh, the black girl with the certifications. But, mm -hmm. and now that I think about it, I'm thinking of other black people that I know and why they all have some kind of certification. Like yeah. people with names that I know, because um, I yeah. also have this whole list of people. Like when you think mm -hmm. of Andre Mack, um, yeah. uh, Krishan, who I mentioned, um, I didn't mention before, but I mentioned him now, Delin Proctor. He was the guy oh, in yeah. uh, one of the guys in Psalm. Well, mm -hmm. clearly, he's studying for the MS, so there's yeah. that. Yeah. Um, there's Brian Duncan, a wine educator um, out of Chicago that um, also does motivational speaking and like Pinterest page is like super amazing. He yeah. used to be the wine director for um, Ben, I can't, Ben 32, 132? In, in Chicago? Like yeah, in Chicago. 36. Um, 36, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I've been there before, but he used to be the um, wine director for them and, you know, took them to, like, the absolute next level. Mm -hmm. All these people that I mentioned are certified. Yeah. Or have some kind of, and by certified, have some type of certification. Yeah. Whether it was something just to get them started on the path. Because mm -hmm. here's the right. thing. Anytime you're in wine anyway, you may start with one certification and you may never get another. But if you keep going in wine, you have to continue to learn. Otherwise, you would not be relevant. Wine changes like weekly. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. you have to read some kind of blog, <laughs> yeah. credible blog, mm -hmm. some kind of publication, take some kind of class, go to some kind of conference. Yeah. So 
it's part yeah. certification and also you need to know people also you need to read it's yeah. it's a uh, do your research it's um a lot of things yeah if if i may add my five cents so when i got Please. in the industry i all i did like before i started working in a winery all i did was read books but <laughs> you don't realize that books are outdated like some of them mm -hmm. most of them are outdated you order them from amazon for like five cents like oh i got all these books yeah all right i'm gonna learn all this stuff um no you're not because yeah. By the time I finished all these books and retained all this information and went out talking to people, I'm like, it's like, oh, man, no, okay, so they call it something different now. So mm -hmm. you have to you have to get out and talk to people. Um, it's not, wine is not the industry where you can just sit behind a blog and be successful. Mm -hmm. You got to get out and talk to people. Mm -hmm. You got to go out and taste wines. You got to go to wineries and you... You just can't just sit. You just can't yeah. sit. It's not so you have to go to the classes. Go to the if you can't afford the classes because they can they can be expensive. Go to seminars. Go to mm -hmm. smaller classes at wine bars. You know, do what you can. Read blogs. Watch people show. talk about wine. Yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely. Not static. It's, it's very cool. yeah. It's very so, cool. out of static industry. And and you have to. So and I mean, if you're really if you're really into it, go get a part time job or volunteer somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's I mean, that's kind of how I learn. I only have one certification, but I'm sort of a hands on learner, so I can take I can take classes and certifications. But what's right. most memorable to me is what I see consistently, what I do consistently. So. I have to work. I have to work at it. I don't. Have, I don't have a very good memory, so I really have to work at it. I have to be a part of something. So that's that's my two cents. You know, okay. you gotta be involved. You gotta yeah. be embraced. My memory went with menopause. So. <laughs> oh <God. laughs> We're going a whole different way with the show now. Oh my bad. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. okay. But no. Uh, <laughs> another thing I will say about that is. Um, there's so much to the wine industry that I didn't realize when I got in yeah. it. Um, a lot of people yeah. think, okay, you're either going to be making wine or selling wine. But there's exactly. so much more to it than that. No, not true so, at all. It's hard exactly. to say, decide what part of the industry you want to be in and then know yeah. whether or not you want a certification. But I would definitely say do some research, do some reading, yeah. find your lane. Mm -hmm. You might want to make wine. You might want to be an importer. Yeah. You might want to be an exporter. Right. You might want to sell it. Right. Um, you might want to teach it. You might want to write about it. Like there, like I didn't even think teaching about wine could ever be like a career. You know, being on the speaker yeah. circuit, speaking at seminars and trade fairs, anything like that. Right. Um, mm -hmm. You know, somebody taking some grapes from California and putting their own <laughs> label on them and, you know, then reselling them as their own. Right. I never thought about that. Or going mm -hmm. somewhere um, like Heritage Link Brands out of um, with Selena Cuff and her husband. Right. who import wines from black South Africans. Like, there are so many different things that you can do mm -hmm. in this industry outside of just going door-to-door, -door, restaurant to restaurant, you know, working for an importer or distributor and selling wine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do a little research as to what you want to do. Like um, how you mentioned um, Tawani Price of Zuri Wine Tours, who is in California and had the idea, let's go to some of these wineries. Let's be right. hands on. Exactly. Right. So since Tawani is taking people places, <clears throat> like, you know, we'll take her for an example. Since she's taking people places, does she need to be um, a master of wine or have a diploma of wine? No. Mm -hmm. Tawani mm -hmm. needs to just know where the wineries are, have the connections right. um, at the wineries, know the people there, which she does, you know, organize the transportation, right. and then get people there mm -hmm. and help them have a good time, which she yep. absolutely does. Right. So, you know, there, and I didn't mention tour guide. So, like, so yeah. many different things you can do in this industry. Just right. research it, see where you fit in, what you're interested in. I right. mean, right. wine writing, wine photography. Right. You just, you can fit anywhere if you so, you know, desire. And also, yeah. I will say as well, 
it's not that whole big glamorous popping bottles, you know. Girl, you <laughs> my ear, reading my mind because I was about it's to say not this is that, not an easy it's, industry. It's not that all. life. It's not that, it's and especially not. with wine. I mean, if you want to be a Syrah girl or a Syrah boy, maybe that's a life, you know, for you. Um, but mm -hmm. the people who are actually out popping bottles at the club and doing that, like that's completely mm -hmm. different from the people that are selling it. Like those are consumers and that, that <laughs> that's not, you know. Yeah. Maybe some cocktail you gotta, people you, you have gotta, that yeah. on occasion, but right. Okay. Right. I see I'm awake now, so I'm on the roll. No. At first, I was <laughs> struggling. It was whew, I was struggling. You were doing it. just fine. You were doing but, just yeah, fine. So that is it's, it's not that whole glamour, especially with wine. It's not that whole glamorous yeah. thing everybody thinks it is. Yes, I have my glamour oh. moments and, you know, press mm -hmm. trips and, you know, travel right. is mm -hmm. involved. And that's what, you, that's what we tweet about. That's what we blog about because that's right. what people yeah. want to hear. They don't want to hear the bad right. stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. right. They don't want to hear about being on your feet for 15 hours serving people, you know, that are wasted. They don't want to hear about the who don't want you to spit no knowledge. They don't want to hear about that. They At work. all. Or the people who come up to you, like you said, people who come up to you, you know, drunk, falling out, or the people who scream on you because you won't serve them any more wine because they're clearly mm -hmm. intoxicated. And you're yeah. like, no, I'm not doing this with you today. Or, or the people who try to play you because they don't think you know anything. When, when you're doing yeah. a tasting and they're saying, oh, is this it? It's a tasting. Mm -hmm. You don't get oh, six. Oh, I yeah. get that all the time. Well, what do I need to do to get some oh, more yeah. wine? You just going to give me this little bit? Uh-huh. And you don't want to get right in How about the people, the people who have been to Paris and California once and think they know everything? <laughs> I can't. can't do it. Right, I can't exactly. do it. I'm with but, So you know what you do Listen, they read the last <laughs> issue of Wine Enthusiasts, and they are clearly yeah. an expert. They like, listen, I my wine okay, subscription is here, and... I'm about to tell you mm -hmm. something. A lot of times, I just let them talk. Because uh -huh. yeah. I'm like, my check already cleared. So you it's talk okay. as much as you want. The rest of people are going to be mad at you because right. I'm, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Do you want this now or yeah. not? You know what but, I forgot to mention, you all? That the heritage of this family, they're from Jamaica. Oh wow! Oh wow! The, the grandmother of the doctor who bought the land in California and brought her over as well, is Jamaican. Nice. And they oh, are wow. makes a really good. Great. They make a really good. Yeah. They make a really yeah. good. Yeah. Freaking phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Oh, so Glennis, you never um, specified where can I find this? Okay, that's a hard. That's another issue. Okay. Um, right. I had to get Paul at Paul's Wine and Spirit. I called them. I yeah. said I can't find this nowhere. He said, "Do you know what distributor has it on this okay. coast?" And if you go on uh, Brown's website, it says you go through, and it looks <laughs> like it's Wine Bowl. However, it's Old Country Vintner. Oh, okay. Okay. Who, oh, okay. Yeah. Paul, yeah. Who Paul deals with, and I said, this was Friday before I went to see Fifty Shades of Grey. I said, okay, I need two bottles. Oh. He said, I, he <laughs> about Thumbs over. I Shut it down. Control all the lead. Mm -mm. <laughs> so Paul can get it for you. Some of the high end um, restaurants may carry it on their wine list, mm -hmm. but walking mm -hmm. into a wine shop, it might not be on mm -hmm. the shelf. Mm -hmm. But I will say because I yeah. requested this, Paul said, "I oh, I need yeah. to start carrying it." I was like, "Yay, please mm -hmm. do, because I'll be here to buy more." Yeah, yeah. And yeah. guys, that's what happened when you are regular at a wine mm -hmm. shop or a wine store. Oh, it's so you know, good. Get, yeah, yeah. They, you know, you get little perks like that. So mm -hmm. exactly. You know, find, yeah. find, 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 find your favorite yeah. wine mm -hmm. store, wine shop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The, you know, Paul, the, Steve, the, one of the owners, he was just yeah. so phenomenal. He said, oh, I remember you girls. Hey, bring the rest of them in. We're doing the sparkling test. I said, no, I got a movie. I, a movie. <laughs> I said, I'm coming in. You're like, I'm on the move. 
I got, yeah, I need, I need to make a quick stop. He said, okay, but I'm going to start carrying this. I guess the distributor like, yeah, you might need to start carrying. Okay. But I love okay. them. I, they're just great people and uh, great. Well, That's a good way to learn about wine, too, um, knowing someone at your local wine shop. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I mean, yeah. at your wine shop, like not the beverage manager in like your grocery store, which that's fine too. But you know, right? Mm -hmm. They kind of move around a bit. But if you know someone at your wine shop that that knows their product, right. they yeah. can tell you what they have that's new, what's good. Mm -hmm. Like they can speak to everything. Exactly. So, um, if they recognize you and you come in, oh, I got this new whatever, whatever. You know, right. you should try it. They will open up a bottle for you and you know let you taste I it. I have to get and be right back. Right. Oh, okay. Uh oh. <laughs> Stop talking about the YouTube. They'll open up a bottle and let you taste it in the store. You know, know different you things like that. So we are talking about after you know, this is the way to get info. I have to. I have to oh um, it's Black History Month. Oh and I have to mention these guys. I never know what she's about to come up with. What's happening? Okay. I know. I know. Can you see this? Oh, my homie, yeah. Matt. Yeah, oh, yeah. This, exactly. this is Sellers. And then exactly. is that Sharp exactly. on the left? Mm -hmm. um, this, these gentlemen are the African-American vendors, and let me get all their names. They what magazine is that? But Mac McDonald I know. is the what one is that? in the middle. Yeah, everybody knows Mac. You do not. Yeah. If you don't know anything yeah. about black people and wine, then you should know Mac McDonald. Uh-oh. Oh, she dropped off. Come on, Glennis. Okay, oh, y'all. There she okay. is. Y'all know there how she I do. Is. I don't know why y'all are gonna start this crazy. Like, okay. why are we you doing good? Computer, we are doing good, girl. I don't know. Daniel Bryan <laughs> is one. Okay, so let's see. Yeah. Okay. Get right. Get get. Come on now. So that's Daniel <laughs> Bryan. Uh huh. From Running Tiger. Okay, they make a Syrah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I should um, know. So this you much. all know. Yeah, it's a nice spicy Syrah too. It's out of Texas, right? Yeah. Well, yes. Mm -hmm. And you know that's Mac McDonald. The coveralls will mm -hmm. do it. Yes, His yes, the wars oh. are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And I forgot this. I'm looking to see this gentleman's name, which I should have had all this together. But I forgot I was going to do this. So um, that's fine. Woo, uh, now, what magazine is that you have there? Well, actually, I was at. Uh, it's called California Country. Mm. Uh huh. California Country, and I got it at Mac, uh, Max uh, Winery when I was out mm -hmm. there. Actually, okay. he was one of the oh, ones okay. who told me. He was like, we. We went for an 11, 11 o'clock a.m. tasting and didn't leave till 6 p.m., mm -hmm. seven bottles later. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And hence, this is how wow. Dino Noir was formed because he was like, there's not that many people of color in the business. You you ladies need to do this. I'm like, mm, do what? Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. I was like, do what? I don't have... Mm -hmm. And we just had this conversation about certifications. I was like... Well, I can't start blogging about anything because in my mind, you need certifications yeah. to be online talking about something. So no. that's when I got right. W said went into It's on the on the internet, so it's gotta be true. You know that um that uh commercial. Okay. Oh, this <laughs> and he signed it. Commercial's like it's on the internet, it's gotta be true. There you go. Yeah. And it's it's frustrating when you see other people uh, you know, who aren't black that have these six Successful businesses, they have no certification, and it's like, what? I know more than you do. How does this happen? But, oh, this is very you know. sharp. Yeah, I, I, I can't even get jump down that rabbit hole, cause girl, yeah. I, I won't be able to go back to sleep tonight. Yeah. Yeah. But, so this yeah. is Van yeah. Sharp. That's the other. Yeah, Van Sharp. Oh, see, I, I no. recognize my people. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. I'm sorry. What's his winery again, Glennis? Awesome. Please. School. Oh, that uh, was Van Sharp, and I still haven't read that for an event. Trying to figure out what I can't see. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Van Sharp. Wait. Let me, let me well, just Google Van his winery. winery. Right. I'm like, girl, do a quick Google search for us, please. 
Okay, Van Sharp, there you go. I can't hold a magazine and do the quick Google search too. Okay, yeah, no. See, because I'm not as not you, honey. babby as y'all are as far as. Okay. Hey, go ahead and talk, and I'll get back with you. <laughs> Love y'all. Sharp Sellers. There you go. There you go. Sharp, well, well, there you go. There Sharp you go. Sellers. And, sure. actually, and it's actually when you Google him, there's actually an episode of him talking with Gary Vaynerchuk on Wine Library TV. Get out of here! I didn't uh -huh. see that episode. I thought I watched all of his episodes. Matt uh, did you? Because he has awesome. a lot of episodes. But so. yeah, do um, Van Sharp or Shop yeah. Sellers? Um, yeah. He was on episode 721 of um yeah. of uh yeah. Yay, Wine Library TV. I don't know why did I you? Are right you now. gonna? Are you gonna do your interview? Um. Tanisha, are you going to do your interview with your wine guy, your French wine guy? Yes, I'm just trying to get it together with him and get a time and, you know, okay. set that all up. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Look out for that guy. She does great videos. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get my <laughs> uh, video together for tomorrow for Which Wine Wednesday. I think I might be doing um, a Blizzard wine. You're doing a Blizzard wine? A Blizzard wine? wine? You, Break like, that down what, for me. You, I don't know that what is. do you what do you want to get stuck in the house oh. with in a blizzard? Oh, so. oh, okay. Oh, that would have been Got apropos you. for today. I know. That's yeah, a sparkling sorry, all mate. day. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, some people are like sparkling, sparkling but like for me, I think I'm gonna want like a you know a heavy red, like a big That's red and a fire. Yes. I but see the thing. I need I need like give me like three bottles of sparkling. I like three oh, of them. Oh well, okay. For a blizzard, I'm gonna be in a house. In the a, house? A, no? Okay. A, it's just me. A. No. <laughs> Did you say A A? No. no. A, okay. A, okay. Yes. <laughs> you sound judgy. You sound real judgy. <laughs> I also right? think it's good to always have something around and available. Um, yeah. Because yeah. who wants to have to run out if you're like, okay, I know it's going to be a storm. Because when, you right. know, when I was in D.C. and there would be storms, I'm like, wait a minute, everybody's running to the store. Like, y'all don't have no yeah. groceries already at your place? What, right. Or what problem? happens when you yeah. get caught at home and can't run to the store? Yeah. But, like, why would you not have anything at your house anyway? I mean. Because oh, you got, drink it. Because you drink it. You just have one bottle at a time? Nope. Maybe, okay. No. Well, maybe that's just saying something about me. I mean, we like, like us. Of course, we don't have one bottle at a time. But most people, True. some people, yeah. Exactly. Okay. You're right. You're right. You're right. No, because I mean now, because yeah. I'm also dealing. Like I said, I was living on less. Uh, and just now, I do one bottle at a time. So I'm mm -hmm. not collecting yeah. as much. Gotcha. Wait. So if you were to collect, are you gonna you collect there and then sit at home, or you gonna keep yeah, it there? Yeah. That out. No, I'm going to collect okay. it and send it home or maybe drink something okay. here. Because um, they okay. have a thing here. Like, you know those flash sales? Like, um, oh gosh. Not Groupon, but like, oh, uh, oh, look, those things that come up like every day, they'll be like different. Living social. Stuff. Not living social. Um, it's not like living social. It's, it's, Hold look and one other one that I know that does like guilt? flash sale. So every yes, guilt. And so oh, like every day okay, at like yes. eleven, yeah. they have a thing here called Vont Privé, where they do vacations, they do wine, like it's ridiculous. Mm, and really? Yes. That's just and so scary. daily they have wine stuff. Like it's taken like it is literally a fight with my within myself every day to not mm. be on here buying like cases. So they had a wine from um Long Dog. Uh Ooh. six bottles, thirty nine euro. Like what? That, that's pennies. They had another one, six bottles for eighteen euro. I'm like, come on now. Like this <laughs> and if they're selling oh. it on the site, it has to have a certain level of quality. It's right. not like okay, we just buy any yeah. kind of crap. Yeah. They also do vacations. I'm trying to get oh. somebody to go with me to Northern Africa. I want to go to Tunisia. They had mm -hmm. um, eight days, your um, hotel accommodations, all inclusive, your flight from Paris, a bottle of wine upon your arrival. It was 349 All what? of that was 349 euro. I'm like, someone has to go with me. I mean, it, and the price changed depending on what day you pick, so it could go anywhere mm -hmm. from 
between that 349 and then like 500. But still, we're talking that's your it's all inclusive place that you're staying at. So that's your food yeah. and drink. Wow. We're talking that's that your home. hotel, that's your flight, that's your transportation from the from airport Paris. to yeah, from Paris. Okay. That's your transport and other places in France too, they um do it. But that's oh, your yeah. transportation to and from the um airport. Your flight too, I'm like, this is ridiculous. So wow. um Wow. Yeah, in a few months, once I get stuff together, um, you're about to start seeing me um, GMG, <laughs> on the GMG on the road. Or when people come here to visit. So I'm trying yeah. to get there. Lord yeah. have mercy. Yeah. You got till October. I mean, pro you probably have passed that because I'll renew my visa, fingers crossed. But I'm like, you got at least till then. Yay! They won't put me out of the country. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, this was great. Does anybody yeah. want to add anything else? No. Okay. I think. Um, oh, I do want to say one thing that this is the anniversary of Whining Women because we started last year in February. Did we? Wow. Did we really? Yes. Get we out did. of here. During the Google Hangout. So wow. happy anniversary, we made it. my friends. Oh, Cheers. I'm glad you knew it. I can't toast you with anything. Right. I don't. That's awesome. Like I don't even have a glass That's by nice. me. Like I don't I have know. nothing. Cheers. I, got a I can't stuff. drink. Oh my God, this bottle's almost done. <laughs> oh, you almost killed the bottle. <laughs> and you want to talk about us? Right. You a -A. call me A A, -A, -A. on me. I'm yeah. All right. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> that concludes our hangout, guys. See you next oh, yeah. time. Oh, we, oh yeah, say, what's, our, what's our next topic? I don't know. No, what we what are we gonna do next? We could stay on after the hangout and discuss it. I have a couple yeah. ideas. Okay. I'm glad we'll you all tweet it out when we figure it out. I hope you all learn something and you know yeah. support. All right. Um, exactly. Bye, everyone. Bye.